I came to the office to share a little bit of my you know, work that I did as a doctoral student and, you know, undergraduate student, my work on bees. But I also came to share my passion for, for bees. I am a bee lover. They're not only important to the service, but they're important to everybody that cares about, you know, pollinators and cares about eating and eating healthy. For every third bite of food you take, thank a pollinator. And you know, most of us, most people don't realize that the majority of the fruits and vegetables that we eat came to us thanks to the services of pollinators. Pollinators are um, a, a cross section of different animals. We have bats who are mammals who are pollinators. We have birds like hummingbirds who are pollinators and migrating back and forth from North America to South America. We have um, invertebrate pollinators, insects like bees. Also, the number two pollinator of all pollinators are flies, which a lot of people don't realize, not like the common house fly, but other types of flies. And the number one pollinator is really bees. And there are about over 4,000 species of bees in North America. The service has made it a real commitment, you know, as they do restoration efforts, as they do, you know, management efforts, and not only on refuge land, but, you know, on all the work that we do with our partners, that, you know, we protect pollinators, that, you know, we take into consideration uh, habitat and, you know, little food plants that, you know, these bees and other insects, beneficial insects, might like. We're here, We're here to make pollinators. We represent Longstreth Elementary School, and we were lucky enough this year to receive a uh, National Fish and Wildlife Foundation uh, Nature of Learning grant. And what we're doing is we're creating a, the, the project's called the Kindergarten Interpretive Pollinator Garden, and we're turning in the, the existing wildlife garden that the refuge had here, and we're, we're creating a, um, a teaching garden using all native plants. And at our school, we're creating a native plant nursery and the goal is to provide plants for other schools throughout the city of Philadelphia. There's a big, big decline, uh, not only in this country, but all across the globe. And, and not only on honeybees, which, you know, they're introduced, they came from Europe, but they are, you know, the pollinators that most effectively pollinate uh, our food crops. But a lot of our native species, they're also disappearing because of invasive species, because of pesticide use, because of climate change, altering the, the patterns, the flower patterns of, for a lot of these plants. So, so it is very important that we reconnect with this aspect of our ecosystems. The, the species number I was talking about before, those are the native bees that evolved here on North America with the plants that they need. Honeybees were introduced in the 1600s. They were bought, uh, brought to North America on the second boat that came to Massachusetts and they're wonderful and useful bees. And most people know something about honeybee biology. Native bees that evolved here with the native plants of North America, those bees tend to be solitary. They're quite different in their behavior. They're not as much social animals as the honeybees are. They don't have to defend a hive. They're not like adapted to communal protection of a hive, so they usually don't sting. Stinging is not one of their big attributes unless their, their own life is threatened. The Fish and Wildlife Service this year is challenging all of our regions to do something for pollinators. And not only, you know, to be aware of them, but to do physically do, you know, pollinator gardens like the one we have here in Region 5. And and promote the idea of pollinator conservation, not only among the Fish and Wildlife Service, but with our communities where we live. We can all do something, you know, to restore and protect a lot of these pollinators that they really need our big help.